I believe the key to experiencing the most motivated year you've ever had, the most energetic year you've ever had, could depend on a very common, yet very and extremely harmful habit. And that habit is the habit of worrying. And so today I'm gonna to show you why this habit is so detrimental to your success and what the amazing thing that happens when we remove this toxic from our minds. What's going on YouTube and those of you listening on the podcast, Joshua Washington here. And I wanna share first off this statistic that I read in this Harvard study that, that just blew my mind. It's from a Harvard youth poll and it says that of, they, they did kind of this study of across different cultures, right? And what they found was 49%, actually 59% of African Americans, 43% of Asians, and 37% of Hispanics reported that they feel under attack a lot. And that's not my quotations, that's what the report does. It puts quotations around a lot. 59% of black people, 49% Asians, 37% Hispanics, which means millions and millions of young men and women are living their lives in fight or flight mode. Millions living in fight or flight mode. Now you may be wondering what is fight or flight mode. Maybe you've never heard of this term. So I'll give you an example. Fight or flight mode is really living your life in survival mode. And it reminds me of, uh, of a story where my cousin and I were walking home from school, right? Because survival mode is only meant to be used when you're trying to survive, okay? It's not meant to be used on a daily, but only when you're trying to survive. And I remember there was a time we were walking home from the bus and this red-nosed pit just shot out of the woods, out of nowhere. No owner, no leash. And so if you're unfamiliar with black people, there are a lot of us that when we see dogs, we run, okay? <laughs> there's no questions asked. If there's no owner attached to that dog, there's no leash, and we see that dog running towards us, our survival instincts kick in, and we are out of there, okay? <laughs> that is your black history lesson early. You're welcome, all right? So me and my cousin, we took off running. And actually, at this time, I realized that his survival mode was, was a little bit better than mine. Mine must have had some kind of malfunction because he ran up the fence to get away from the dog. I ran along the fence to get away from the dog, okay? So he's going up the fence and I'm running along the fence screaming, hey, help, help, somebody get the dog, get the dog, okay? And I, I, I will never forget somebody stopped and helped us out. But when we got home, I just, I could not stop shaking. You ever had, you ever been so afraid that your leg, your foot is just tapping off the ground because you're so afraid? Or your body's just shaking you and you uncontrollably and you can't stop it? That is a response that our body naturally kicks into from all the overload of adrenaline because we've just experienced survival mode. And if this statistic is true, that 59% of black people, 49% of Asians, 37% of Hispanics are living or feeling like they're under attack a lot, forcing them to live in fight or flight mode, then that means that millions of young men and women are living, or I, should, I shouldn't even say living, are experiencing a constant state that they were not meant to live and experience. You and I, we are not meant to live in fight or flight mode. We are not meant to live there. And that's why worrying is so detrimental to your success. And that's why worrying is one of the greatest, it's one of the most common habits that we have to put a stop to. Because think about this, your youth, these are the years where you should be beaming with, with like expectation. Like your eyes should be filled with light at all the possibilities that are truly ahead of you. Because you, you by all means have the years and the time ahead of you, God willing. But instead, there are millions of young men and women who are not, this is not their experience. Their experience instead is every day, the anxiety, the uncontrollable, uh, uncontrollable anxiety because their mind is in constant worry. This habit of constant worry has become a, a, a common state. And so I'm going to share with you because I want to help break you free from 
from this or, or bring your awareness to how this is impacting your life. And so there's three reasons why you should stop worrying. I was going to say I believe, but just period. There's three reasons why you should stop worrying. I'm going to go to the board here. The first reason why you should stop worrying so much is because worrying. Let me get my pen here. You should stop worrying because worrying changes nothing. It changes nothing. There is not one single addition or subtraction of time that will take place because you are worrying. In fact, the science shows us that all worrying does is it injects poison into our mind and our body. And I don't mean that like to be dramatic. I mean like seriously, literally. There have been studies scientifically that show if we were to you know, study the mind and we, and we saw a mind that is in a constant state of worry, what we would discover is a lot of the diseases that we see in our life, like cancer. We, there's been studies that show that cancer is correlated to a highly stressful life. Also known as a, a highly worried life. An anxious life. So worrying could actually be literally harming your health. You could be literally baking a disease that you were never meant to have. You were never meant to experience all because you're worrying all because you you fall into this habit of worrying. So that's number one. That's why we should stop worrying because it's poison. It's literal poison to your life and to your mind. And who would willingly, if I gave you a glass of poison, you would not willingly drink it because you know the impact it would have on your life. And I'm here to tell you that the reason why we should stop worrying and we should work to, to cut this habit out of our lives is because it's poison to our lives, all right? Number two, the reason why you should stop worrying is because worrying, it blocks critical thinking. Worrying blocks critical thinking. Now, why is this so important? If you are, if you have a situation in front of you, right? There's something that has you worried. The most unproductive thing you can do is just sit in this cycle and worry about it. Like imagine that my house is on fire and there was a, a clear, like the fire started small and began was slowly growing or quickly growing, but I had right beside me like four extinguishers, fire extinguishers. Imagine if I instead just stood there and ran around the kitchen yelling, the house is on fire, 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 the house is on fire. And that may sound like a silly example, but that's exactly what happens when we worry. When we worry and we get into this habit of just worrying, worrying, worrying and obsessing over something, obsessing over a negative outcome that we expect, what we, what we are in fact doing is we are blocking our mind from the ability to critically think, to come up with solutions. You need to know that you were created to develop solutions. It is a part of your being. It's a part of who you are. Over our existence, over history, we as human beings, we figured out complex situations. When we take out the toxic blockers out of our mind, which one of the biggest ones is worrying. And when I say worry, I mean the whole umbrella that comes with worry, the anxiety, the fear, all of it. All of that is a, is a, is a form of worry. And when we worry, we block our ability to critically think, which means we could be just allowing our, the house, I'm using the house in this analogy is your life. We could be allowing our lives to just burn down, our futures to just burn down when the solutions are already within us, but we can't see or access the solutions if we are stuck in a habit of worry. So we got to cut the worrying out. Okay. The third thing here, the third reason why we got to cut out this worrying, this habit is because worrying, it robs peace. Worrying robs peace. Now think about this. Here's why peace is so, so important. 
I'm gonna do like a, let's, let's try this mental exercise. What if I told you that tomorrow, what if you knew, actually, what if I didn't even tell you, but what if you knew that tomorrow was going to be the best day of your life? Like the best day you've, you've ever had. How much would you look forward to tomorrow? How great would your expectation rise for tomorrow? If you just knew tomorrow's going to be a fantastic day. Tomorrow's going to be excellent. Well, we know it would, it would increase tremendously. Why? Why would that happen? And I'm going to show you this. First, I want to read something to you. There's a verse in, in Philippians 14, uh, 6, and it talks about this. It talks about why we shouldn't worry. And I'd rather share this with you because the, this principle is a lot more um, credible because it's been around for thousands and thousands of years, right? So here's what it says. Let me find this real quick because I think this is so important. When we look at this verse in Philippians, here it is. Four, I said 14, no, four, six. <laughs> there is no 14. Four, six, check this out. It says, be anxious for nothing. Nothing. It didn't say some things, then say, try not to sometimes be anxious for nothing. Get the worry out, get the anxiety out. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made and known to God. And the peace, that's what we're talking about here, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, the second piece is, actually, let's just stop there for a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw something, which is dangerous, but I'm, I'm going to try this out. I want to draw something for you. Because I think that that's what will help show you what I'm talking about here. Let's go back to the board. We're talking about peace here. I want you to think, think about like your brain, like the literal image of your brain. Because here's the most dangerous thing about worry. Think about your brain, right? I'm going to draw a little brain here. This is my version of what a brain looks like. So all the doctors, please excuse me. All right. This is what your brain looks like when it's consumed in worry. Okay. Worry is in the brain, which think of the brain like a, like soil. Like when you plant something, when you plant a seed, you want to plant it into good soil so that it grows. And so the brain is good soil. Whatever you plant into it, it will grow. And so if you plant something uh, like worry, worry is a toxic trait. There's nothing nutritious about worry. It's, it's all toxic, which means, uh, in, in my opinion, it's trash. And so when our brain is under the habit of worrying, we are in the habit of feeding our mind trash. There's just really no other way I see to put it. But here's what happens. Worry goes down. It doesn't just stay in our mind. It goes down. Picture this. It goes down to our eyes. And what happens when it goes down to our eyes is we see everything through the eyes of worry. Everything around us becomes like, imagine if I put like a red lens over your eyes and everything you look at would be red. That's exactly what happens when we have this habit of worry in our mind. Everything we see becomes worrisome. And that's why there's millions and millions of young men and women who are walking around feeling under attack. And this is exactly why I'm so against this idea that you should see yourself as oppressed or see yourself as, you know, whatever, feeling whatever other thing the media is telling you to look at yourself as. Because when you get that into your mind, you see it through your eyes. And so if you think you're oppressed in everything you look at, you think someone's trying to oppress you. If you see it through lack, if worry causes lack in your life, then everything you look at 
it promotes lack. Because worry always works its way down to the eyes. Here's the good news though. The same way worry works its way down to our eyes, here's what happens. When we get worry out, we make room. We create space for something else to live here. And what's that something else? Well, I wanna go back to this first, right? That's something else that we allow to live in our mind is what I like to call expectation. And here's what this verse in Philippians continues to say in verse six. It says, finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. I like to think of all these things in this verse, the truth, the, the, the good report. I like to think of all these things as nutrients for the brain. Nutrients, meaning it's good. It promotes good growth. When we allow our mind to focus on a good report, when we allow our mind to focus on uh, a positive expectation that tomorrow is going to be excellent, that we are not, today is not the end of our lives, and we don't have to expect bad things to happen in the future. When we allow our brain to, to be a place of nutrients, then that also makes its way down to our eyes. And now we begin to see with eyes of expectation. Now our eyes begin to think, man, I, I'm so excited about today. I'm so excited about my future. I'm so excited about whatever is ahead of me, even though things in front of me or behind me may be bad. Why? Because I've moved the worry out of my mind and I understand that my life was created for success so that means I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry. And this is an incredible, you, you gotta get this. When you learn to kill the worry, you make room for goodness, nutrients in the brain. You make room for things that are, that are, that are positive, like gratitude. You make room for things that are positive, like thanksgiving. Instead of spending your time obsessing over what's going wrong. You spend your time thanking God for all the things that are going right. Even if it's only one or two, you dwell on that. You make room for truth as this verse is telling us. And your eyes, your eyes will, will then see a bright future. I hope this makes sense. Because when you do this, that's how you spark and that's how you skyrocket tremendous amounts of motivation in your life. Because here's the truth. Your eyes will always catch up with your mind. Your eyes will always catch up with your mind. And so if you want this to be the best year you've ever had, the, the most motivated, the most energetic year you've ever had, if you want to produce at the highest level you ever have, experiencing a success-filled year, a success full life, then you got to kick out the worry. You have to kick out this extremely harmful habit of worrying. And one way to do that, you're doing it already by making sure you make positive things, positive nutrients, a, a part of your weekly routine. And a part of how you can do that is making sure that you stay locked in here. Make sure you hit that notification button. Make sure you, you, you don't miss any of this value because it's going to help you keep the worry out and keep your mind primed for nutrients and for growth so that you can have the greatest year you've ever had. All right? I'll see you all next week. And But until then, I want you to remember something so important. Success is your destiny. I'll see you on the next one.